I'm Yogesh Sud this side. I'll be you know leading this webinar discussion today. If you can hear me, can you please type yes into the chat box? Okay, thank you very much. So uh, it's at the stroke of three that we have decided to start this discussion or webinar. And uh, though there are many people who are pinging in and joining us, but for those of us who have joined on time, I like to start this and welcome you all for this webinar on crucial accountability. My name is Yogesh Sud, and I have been in 1990 uh, group companies and product ranges, etc. And I'll tell you what all we do in a while. And I have been privileged to know some of you personally. Some of you, I know, we have been interacting professionally. Some of you are connected, uh, you know, with each other or with me on LinkedIn. So it's privileged, you know, to to walk you through this content on crucial accountability. So who we are, we actually call ourselves as a group of companies and our group name or the mother name is BYLD. And BYLD expands as building your leadership differentiators. And in our group, there are many other companies also or different businesses are there. I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But what we distinguish ourselves as is we are providing unparalleled range of globally and nationally benchmark not only benchmark, but research-based products. Those research-based products, which are culturally neutral and have got direct impact on organizational effectiveness. So we are not into me too or copy solutions. We have a very pretty you know, clear line of sight that we want to operate in the domain where the products are original, products are researched, and products are validated across the you know, uh, continents across the globe. And we are today we are partners to seven of the top 20 global L&D companies. Of course, we do a lot more than those seven also. But this is what we are at this point in time. In fact, our clients tell us that we are the largest in this part of the world, that is South Asia, because of the depth, breadth, and you know the, the range of programs and services which we offer. Our consultants have 1,000 plus years. In fact, it's much more now you know, because the kind of range experience they bring in. It is cumulative experience we talk about. And as I was saying, for the last two decades, we have been serving more than 2,000 clients. Now, we actually are there. Why, why we are there in the market so long and why we have you know, gained a predominant position in this very, very uh, competitive and small business space is because we are there in terms of understanding client needs and bringing the best solutions across the globe, which has been benchmarked to the client. And we meet clients' need every day within, with our values, which are the acronym is CARE, customer centricity, the first one of that, accountability, reciprocity, and entrepreneurship. Now, this is a very interesting part because today the subject we are going to talk about is accountability, and that is a value in our system, you know, and we live and breathe by that. So, what drives us at BYLD, that is building your leadership differentiators, our vision. We have got a vision set up very clear for us. We say we will be the most preferred and comprehensive provider of personal, professional, and organizational effectiveness solutions. So when we are saying most preferred, we are saying that the range and the methodology is so deep with us that once clients engage with us, our relationship with most of the clients go on for long periods of time because our solutions are varied. Our solution, our delivery methods are very diverse. And I'll talk about that in a minute again. Our mission is to make individuals and organizations measurably more effective. And the way we define effectiveness is ability to do more with lesser resources. That means can we keep on increasing the output or the quality? At the same time, the commitment of resources like time, like money, like efforts, I keep on reducing over a period of time. A simple example which all of us can relate with this, for example, we have got sales organizations. And a typical salesperson is able to make, say, uh, 10 calls in a day. And for making those 10 calls, he's spending eight to you know, four to six hours. Now, can this person spend less number of time or maybe three hours to make those 10 calls? And can he at the same time increase the number of calls to 11 and 12? That's how we say effectiveness. If you're able to do more, whether at leadership level, at team level, at an organizational level, and at the same time, constantly reducing the resources which we are consuming. 
and as we just said our values are customer centricity that means internal and external customers you know they come at the top of the list of our values accountability and we'll see more on into details but we like to hold each other accountable for the best customer results and reciprocity is one of the values we say that i have a right to retaliate you know for a behavior good or bad if i am receiving that from someone in the organization even if most senior leader is getting on to that track we need to make sure that we are understanding that and giving it back and entrepreneurship is again linked to the money matters which we talk about that how we can do more with lesser resources and we need to be carefully evaluating every effort or every money which we put into that so this is how we are in terms of our uh, organization building your leadership differentiators and then of course when as we say that one is known by the company one is known by the and uh, we do a lot of research international domain and also participate in that research from here in india and some of these books crucial conversation accountability etc you will find directly my name's reference and whatever we have done you know to to contribute to that research and so what we do is we look at what is happening in the latest in terms of human behavior leadership behavior capture that in the form of books you know and then you know based on the books we write programs and which of course are then you know conducted across the globe the contents are of course research and you know culture neutral geography neutral but still we have the ability you know to look at them in terms of local customization and this book you see here diversity in coaching diversity in coaching was the book where i contributed to in first time in 2005 when i formed the very first chapter of icf in this part of the world and then of course now icf has gone to every nook and corner of the country but that point in time it was kind of very unique concept and most of us didn't know about executive coaching or even icf so this is the kind of work we have been doing over the year or five behaviors of the dysfunctional team we are there which we again partners to you know some of these big brands when wiley we look at vital smart actch ken blanchard inside out wiley with you know business today persona no these are all globally leading brands in their respective domains for example vital smarts into human behavior research in accountability in dialogue in influence in change ken blanchard companies you would have heard about situational leadership and other range of whole host of programs in team in change etc inside out are the original researchers behind grow coaching model and wiley of course is into programs like five behaviors of a dysfunctional team work of leaders and all kind of assessments then business today business today is board based simulation where we do a lot of work in for manufacturing service industry etc when we have got customized board available to look at into their learning and development needs persona is into communication and effectiveness one of the largest company across the world again five behaviors is a program as we were referring to talent smart is an emotional question company eagles flight is into experiential learning where we can take you know up to 500 people in a room for short duration give them an experience of simulation where they reflect and you know looking at how we can change the behavior and of course luminous park and everything this they are into assessments now we are businesses which are headquartered in india one is yoma yoma technology and yoma uh, business solutions uh, you know which are into staffing and technology platform which we do for in house businesses as well as outside and door training and consulting our oldest company in the group which we started in 1998 so with this you know we look at uh, vital smarts which is our uh, the, the business we're going to focus on because all these companies are uh, structured as different business units headed by leaders who have their own sales team and of course we got back end at at technology and hr it's, uh, it's you know the support functions as as common to all of us now vital smarts which is uh, at this point in time are innovator in global, global train, you know corporate training and leadership development why we say innovator because we have done right from the word go almost 30 years ago we have looked at our three decades as we say we have looked at uh, you know what drives human behavior and what can help us to change that and what can leaders learn to influence you know what are those four leverage you know high leverage skill sets and you know what kind of changes we can make what kind of impact we can create and in fact today we have already impacted 4 million people across the globe which is one of the highest numbers of individuals who have gone in through the training programs so this is something which is we talk about vital smarts the most innovative in fact the, i mean we won't be boasting if we make a strong claim that no other training company comes close to vital smarts including many of us in our own repertoire who do basic primary research on behavior or issues 
and then write books and come out with training programs because these are not someone that an author one day woke up and thought that this is i need to write and you know it became famous and we wrote a program on that no they very well research can be validated by any uh, standards so what we have seen here is during our research and still it's on going it has not stopped so far that high performing agile team huge discovery when we made uh, almost two, two and a half decades ago now high performing agile teams in companies they do two things very well one is that they surface issues that means in their team meetings in their board meetings in their interpersonal discussions they surface the issues the toughest and the most significant issues even in the situation where there are power difference and this is very uniquely you know position what i mean i make a statement even in situations where there are power differences because a hierarchy and you know power perception can make people go into silence that means they want to speak out about issues but they don't because they feel threatened in fact there was an article in harvard business review magazine a couple of years ago if anyone is interested i'll be happy to share that we talked about why people don't speak up in corporate world you know and they came out with couple of reasons they said one is they are afraid of consequences second is you know they feel why why to speak up you know why i stick my neck out and you know take that risk and third was in any case how it is impacting me and fourth they say that people may not have the skill set and the mindset to have those kind of discussions so they get to agreement they operate and make decisions and more meaning though there is lot more can be discussed and done they don't go into that and and second part if you look at here once they have agreement uh, after tough so you know important discussions fierce you know discussions and then they hold each other accountable that means they solve problems they prevent problems holding each other accountable today we hear a lot of uh, you know buzzword around accountability or agile organizations or agile coaching etc but the fundamental part there is am i able to hold people accountable am i or are we able to create a culture where people can speak up their mind because more minds you know people open up with more are the probabilities of you know solving problems early or even catching problems early and also both these things when people do they build respect and trust which is the fundamental thing in you know making any team effective or organization move forward so what we have seen again and again as we were saying that more than 4 million people we have trained what more than 4 people or 4 million people know and in the process we have done behavioral research you know uh, observational research we have gone through tons tons and tons of data verified that verified you no know, kind of um, vetted that with our findings we were invested as many as 50 thousand hours in observing people and in the situations where the stakes were high that means they were not discussing ordinary things or they were not finding over nickel and dimes they were real strong discussions business stakes on the table and the many times the other person was more powerful if you look at here second point and third of course is the other person was defensive people were becoming very defensive when we got to hold them accountable for anything so we have watched these situation discussions and what floored us was that the way some people handled them or as we later on called them dialogue masters handled them was very different than most of us were handling and their handling what they did was that at the end of those kind of discussions the relationship was even stronger it's, it was an amazing you know the people who are you know having all kinds of issues which they were not able to you know discuss earlier they were putting on the table and then when they were putting on the table they were able to have tough discussion but they had you know high respect for each other at the end of it and the second point was that the other person agreed with concerns and change you know so this was a huge kind of thing that's what we said what are these people doing differently and that is how we started realizing that they were displaying some skill sets based on which we wrote the so called crucial conversation which has sold more than 4.5 million copies across the globe and one of the all time best sellers and then of course came accountability came influencer now we are going to launch power of habits very soon this talks about how we can change you know habits which are difficult to change so this is something which is very interesting and when we learn from actual dialogue masters then what we said that is it only applicable in north america or asia or europe so we did cultural neutralization and say what are those common things which humans can display or you know they can work bring to the workplace social life personal life which are universally applicable in terms of increasing their dialogue capacity and that is what these skills came across to us 
and we panned in the form of first book was crucial conversations as we said earlier tools for talking and stakes were high now this title of this is 4.5 million as i was saying earlier then of course the second book which is a crucial accountability we're going to talk about more this today it talks about tools for resolving violated expectations broken commitments and bad behavior violated expectation is that someone agreed to do something for you and broken commitments is somebody really promised to do that he said that yes i'm going to do it then a kind of making a hard commitment to get out of the social norms and went into the process as we call as the bad behavior so crucial accountability you know we learn from people they were resolving commitments um, and bad behavior and of course as i said crucial conversation is for alignment and agreement by fostering open dialogue while the crucial accountability is holding others accountable you know for uh, violated behaviors when we are trying to hold others accountable for violate you know violated expectations or be accountability and not just in the in the you know uh, is that uh, there is a common element in both crucial conversation as well as crucial accountability the common part is that you need to have a different skill set you need to have a different mindset you need to have something which is called as how do i combine my thinking and how do i combine my skills to have the result or the output in kind of conversation which are difficult where there may be emotional things are there where their stakes are high because something you are trying to solve or with a difference of opinion people are not keeping their you know commitments you know they are behaving out of the norm so these are some of the things which we tried to study so when we said look at if, if this is crucial accountability can make such a huge difference then what are accountability conversations and why are they different or why are they important and how to improve results when crucial account with uh, crucial accountability skills so these were the two fundamental questions in our mind many years ago when we went beyond conversations and started looking at you know how the conversations can be applied in different situations and one of the important thing was how do we hold people accountable you know once we have agreed and how do we make sure that people are doing what they are doing and if they are not doing then you know how we can have an agreement on that so how do we look at accountability now we look at accountability in a slightly different fashion uh, our definition of accountability is simple we say responsibility for actions and answerability for outcome on the agreed oblique needed tasks or goals you know so so look at the keywords the keywords here is responsibility for actions and answerability for the outcome now what i'm what we are trying to say here is or saying here is that if i'm supposed to be doing say i'm responsible for uh, running my as a head of department running a department so i am responsible for the actions the right kind of actions which we need to take and we must be taking and not only i'm responsible for action but i'm also answerable what these actions are leading to as an outcome on the agreed or needed tasks or goal many times the goals are agreed many times they just have to be done because the organization requires or there's some some customer driven requirements so they have to be done now if we don't do that and and this is what we call is a gap in performance say for example we agreed to this straight line if you look at the black one this was our agreement you no know, whether the the goals were agreed or they were needed and then there is a kind of a fluctuation sometimes they were met sometimes they were exceeded sometimes they were never met and finally you reach here at the bottom this is what we talk about as a gap as a actual performance gap believe you my friends we have seen again and again and again irrespective of hierarchy irrespective of organizational culture irrespective of business irrespective of geography irrespective of cultures irrespective of ethnicity people find it very difficult to discuss this gap you know they 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 are many times they are hesitant or they just gloss over or they just ignore in the initial stages and that is what leads to execution failures means what we are saying here is a they may not talk about it they will say the other person will understand they may think that you know oh it's okay it's the first or second thing and the person will do better in the third or fourth attempt or they may say that look oh fine it's okay i mean this is a small thing but our research shows that if we expect any behavior which is out of the norm for the first time you know we must be handling it or you know talking about it at that very moment or as soon as possible at that not very moment because after second repetition 
you are going into a social norm or a social contract which becomes very difficult to break there after you know because by then the person has thought or the other person is thinking that is acceptable this is okay you know so maybe the the, the tone and texture of discussion will be different but even then it becomes very difficult if you are if a social norm or a social contract has been established of you know expecting or tolerating bad behavior or you know not talking about violated expectations you know or you know there's a gap and you're not pointing it out so many times this is happening and this kind of uh, behavior at leadership level not not that only at leadership level but more so at leadership level leads to execution failures and the consequences can be huge you know we studied different sectors for example in this case you look at the examples of the roads and highways you know we we, we came across data point we said that if these crucial conversations are not held if people are not held accountable there were a 275% cost overrun and 22 months late that the delay in the project so you look at that the cost is increasing time is increasing so huge impact it can create aviation industry you now look at it 1100% cost overrun because the stakes are very high because you know it's a very high value value gain it's a very high price gain and that's some of the data which we came across then of course construction construction industry if you look at you know 1400% cost overrun and 10 years late you know, so these are the kind of industries we studied and not that it is only in these industries but these are some of the classic examples we came across and of course maritime industry 1900% cost overrun but actually on time because there was time criticality they were able to control one element and they were supposed to be there so how about when we say how about you here if you look at uh, from the maritime industry and we come back to our own life our own situation you now 88% of people we talk to and it's a mind boggling number 88% 88% people say they are on working on a project right now that they believe not that they anticipate will fail they believe it will fail and they're just working you know they are not talking about it they're not going to stop any time because they think it is not my job 91% people can tell it will fall short of results 91% because you're all experts they may be talking about it in the tea break coffee break or in some informal discussions when they come back into the room and they talk about the the the, the, you know, the success rate of the past they can tell that it is not going to work it's going to fall short of results and less than 30% speak up now how about you again 81% say there are leaders who could get projects back on track but 100% of these say those leaders are difficult or impossible to project to approach this is again a question on leadership because on leadership we have seen a behavior and this is this is not to any particular organization or any particular you know individual we are talking about we have seen behaviors in leaders we have seen that you know we have seen behaviors where they they are difficult to approach because when the project starts tanking or going off the ramp they start becoming more and more uh, secluded you know so this is something which is very 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 you know interesting to see now when you look at these kind of data points you know leadership the impact now do they say we, we then started to look at if they were able to hold those crucial accountability discussions you know what if they held crucial conversations or accountability conversations what will be the impact you know we saw direct measurable results 39 to 55% cut dollar impact that means what the money was saved to that teams in any currency then 29 to 64% reduced cost overruns of course look at the next point data point reduces delays you know improve quality and functionality and of course you know are less likely to damage team morale which is very important when all these four above are happening or two or three of them are happening of course you know the morale of the team goes higher now this is very interesting piece here you know why we say this is interesting piece here is and how do we kind of look at this we do of course as we were saying earlier observational research and of course we do kind of go to the site you know shadow people look at what actual business results are going on 
and we discuss that we understand that and we you know validate that data write books write articles and one of the such study we have done is in even in hospitals can you believe it in hospitals now corporate world these examples are very common you can imagine in a, even in hospital where safety is considered to be the highest priority where the recovery of the patient is seems to be the top most priority top most thing and we have done this mentioned all this these facts more in more details at our website called silenceskills.com you can see at the bottom where there is a kind of a gap which is happening in the performance issues in the discussions in the expectations and because people are not handling them and that's why the study was titled as you know silenceskills.com you know now there were 150 hours of observation we invested in there were focus groups were at six hospitals you know and then we of course kind of validated in different locations also survey with 1700 nurses doctors administrators and other clinicians and by the way this is not the only data we got another website called silencefails.com that is silence s i l e n c e fails f a i l s dot com where we have given corporate study also linked to the projects and corporations and with this kind of same data sample these were the results you know these were the things which were suffering patient safety quality care employee satisfaction productivity physicians you know and nursing turnover and then what was happening was that what was the conversation they were not able to hold this was result of missing conversation this was result of some very obvious issues accountability issues accountability gaps respect gaps right from competence if you look at at the very top you know to the work ethics mistakes people were doing the rules were being broken people were showing disrespect to each other lack of support and micromanagement now these were the kind of conversations which were not being held on these issues this was look at on the right side in in, in the white column portion here patient safety was suffering quality care was suffering in fact what was happening to the extent was that in many cases we noticed that surgeons while going from surgery to surgery they were not even washing hands properly they were visiting patients because in the, when they go from one patient to the next patient in their opd they were not following the basic safety protocols even there is something called as time out as a concept time out as a concept in operation theater means that every time a patient is rolled in you know the team gets together and checks everything you know which part to be operated upon what role surgeon is going to play what no role nurse is going to play how how long the operation is going to last but they are supposed to be discussing it but in that time out surgeon you know or the senior most person there would be either catching up on the mobile calls or will be here and there not part of time out and nobody would point out that behavior and in the process many times the surgical errors happen because they, he or she was not engaged in the process so these are the kind of you know conversations on the left hand side around these areas if not handled well if people were not held accountable the results for this so this is what we call as seven crucial accountability conversations you know these seven are as we saw earlier around competence work ethics mistakes people do and they are not held accountable they break rules people ignore that they show disrespect and of course not talked about lack of support they don't talk about micromanagement these are the percentages which impact around these areas now does it make a difference when people do speak up so we wanted to study the other side of it is it really so powerful or is it you know our data is not fully validated so what we have seen here is when people speak up the direct observation was better patient outcomes you know and um, they were more satisfied workers or even the patients with their workplace even patients were more satisfied because they were the the, the you know of course exhibit uh, more discretionary effort now discretionary effort is a very powerful thing we saw when you know you are holding uh, people accountable discretionary effort means you know people going beyond the call of duty people going beyond what they are supposed to be doing people going beyond what is expected from them that is you know they if you look at in the customer service uh, processes they are kind of delighting the customer because they are providing more than what they think the customer needs or customer wants at that point in time so the more discretionary effort is put on and have a greater intent to stay that means their retention their affiliation their you know love for the place is much better you know but what we do but we as leaders or individuals do most of the times we avoid 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 crucial conversations you know we we may it may be and not discuss incompetence 
Now, these are the questions we we have seen that only one to twelve percent times or the people do that discussion, talk directly to problem teammates. Only around sixteen percent do that. Candidly discuss disrespect. Less than seven percent do that. Confront broken rules or mistakes. Around twelve percent do that. This is the percentage. You can see it is just near single digit, either in single digit or very close to single digit. People don't do that. They they are not used to it. They 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 think what is the value and why should I get involved into this, you know? And then what happens is. Suddenly the water is above the head, and we see that things are not moving, or now I'm getting impacted, or when the stakes are increases, we then intimidate if we can, threaten, compel, and coerce. So this you see is a very classical behavior in accountability. Most of the time we see, we ignore, 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 avoid, 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 and then there comes a threshold. Then you have to do that. We have seen this pattern in in leadership levels at across the organization. don't give performance feedback don't talk about it up front first quarter first month second quarter second month and then there after suddenly on the you know in the third quarter they are talking about sacking the person they are talking about he's or she's not doing well they are talking about that oh you know he is not the right fit but little they realize that there were many missed opportunities along the way where the person needed to have that up front crucial discussions you know or crucial accountability conversations which we did not hold as leaders you know so what are a crucial accountability and why are they so important and what are the skills which are required so we have seen the importance we're going to just venture into the skill sets of this and then we'll be open up you know for some uh, quick discussions on question and answers and you know listening to your view point also so well, during our research we came across some very interesting steps or sequence of steps which people follow who are better than others in crucial accountability discussions and there was this we when we were discovering uh, what we were discovering during the research was that there is a kind of a pattern not in the exact sequence but there was a kind of a pattern which later on you know we kind of put it in a model and see what people were doing so if you look at when you pin uh, the you see three things here before during and after now this before during and after we have put into diagrammatic uh, representation or you know for us to visually understand that how the model works or the sequence works but it doesn't mean that it moves only linearly what i'm saying here is that it doesn't mean that get unstuck and start with hard we only do here we can do it here also we might have to do it here also but mostly it is it needs to be done there you know so before the crucial accountability discussions we have seen dialogue masters or people who are able to hold those discussions they do three kind of a things you know three skills they kind of employ get unstuck start with hard and master my stories get unstuck is they are able to understand you know what is the real issue okay what is the real issue where i am stuck and the way we define stuck is that when i am not getting what i want or i am getting what i do not want you know i am not moving forward so they identify very clearly what is the issue where they are getting stuck second is start with heart start with heart is that they really want to clarify in their mind that what i really want to accomplish because many times if we don't have that clarity what we want to accomplish in crucial accountability discussion we end up either going into silence or going into violence silence is because in front of my leader my hierarchically superior person sitting in front of me i withdraw i become quiet i may still be speaking but not speaking the real issue and the violence is i try to overpower my ju- i think i know better but these dialogue masters have different storytelling have different habits they say that i start with heart means that i am clear what i want for myself what i want for my the other person what kind of relationship i want to hold you know what is really i want that's what we call a start with heart so they very clear about where they want to go in this kind of accountability discussions and third is they they master their stories they clarify their inner thoughts because all of us have got you know um, baggages all of us got the emotional pieces which are going on all of us have got something which we talk about is as you know past experiences which impact you know when we look at the entire piece in this entire direction so what 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 we do in the entire process so this is something we call master my stories and stories of various kinds but incidentally and this is a classic human nature incidentally whenever we are kind of in a crucial conversation or accountability discussion because accountability discussions mean some running of emotions some stakes on the table some difference of opinion some broken expectation you know some bad behavior we become adrenaline rushed and our mind and body behave in the similar fashion as if we were under physical threat 
when we are under physical threat we tend to either fight or flight that means we give it back or we try to run away from the situation similarly when we are under psychological stress in crucial conversation or crucial accountability our research shows our mind operates in the same fashion so either we go into silence or we go into violence that means either we mentally withdraw from the discussion there are various kinds of silence and violence of course but we broadly use the term silence and violence silence i tend to mentally withdraw from the main point or the area which i want to discuss so they may be very important for me but i don't feel like discussing violence is i try to overpower other person with my with with words not physically so no i may use different behaviors at that point in time but i am trying to control the conversation and this is something with the, these people are very good at handling you know where they are stuck what they want to accomplish and you know they mastering their stories and then the next step is during the uh, conversation or during when you are holding the uh, having the uh, accountability conversation these people have got a very fundamental feeling going on in their mind that they need to create safety in dialogue we call it as psychological safety not only for the other person also but for self and we talk about in details what we have learned from dialogue masters how you create safety for yourself you know and how you create safety for the other in the dialogue and they constantly keep on expanding the pool of shared meaning expanding the pool of shared meaning means that it is not only about data because generally as leaders or managers we tend to put lot of data on the table and we say okay this is enough for discussion but good dialogue master they are also looking at not only data but also maybe apprehensions also maybe emotions also maybe concerns also maybe other things related to that also maybe fears also maybe apprehensions in the process so they constantly keep on expanding the pool of shared meaning because they know that if i am able to surface those toughest issues you know at this point in time then the later on when we are going into execution phase or when we are looking at you know getting the results things will be smoother nobody can say oh i had this doubt or you didn't allow me to speak and so on and so forth and of course if you look at the two arrows in this there have to be two to tango you know this is something you know you know my meaning that is i am if someone i'm trying to hold someone accountable and you know their meaning the other person we are trying to have this accountability discussion with describing the gap describing the gap if you recall we saw that straight arrow and a curved line where was the gap we we demonstrated with the help of a reverse arrow so we describe the gap and it is a huge skill describing the gap is the most difficult though the easiest but the most difficult skill to execute you know and people struggle there people even struggle there to you know kind of state the expectation and describe the gap and for their meaning we make it safe as we were saying earlier you create safety psychological safety make it safe for yourself and make it safe for other and that's one part of it and the second part of it is what is the mindset going on these are the skill sets we are talking about what is the mindset going on along with the skill sets so we say that generally when you are you are you are getting bad behavior for someone or you are not getting what you want in a discussion there is a broken promise or an expectations are there we tend to tell that this person is not interested in doing this we kind of tend to label the person that he doesn't want to do or he doesn't know how to do etc etc so the our research shows that there is no silver bullet our research shows that there we need to as leaders or as people who are holding others accountable we need to look at two components and that is called as motivation and ability is the person feeling motivated to do that particular job was there a motivational problem or was that an ability problem you know what is happening there so we need to diagnose it the diagnosis part means that we need to be really looking at what is the real reason and we call it broad bending your diagnosis we are looking at what is the reason why he is not doing it and this diag both the factors motivation and ability operate at three levels personal level social level and structural level you know let me give you an example here suppose someone in your sales team is not giving you the desired results obviously you may say that he doesn't know how to do the work etc etc and this is a question of skill set and the results are suffering the most common thing which people do is work on as we call it source 2 if you see the number 2 you know give him training you know put him into some classroom give him some skills now that is one part of it that is just one component out of the six which we are trying to build on with the help of training there may be social motivation issues or social ability issues because people around him there is a culture of mediocrity people are not doing their job this is a new person who came into the team 
and whenever he try to ask questions or try to do something extra or show discretionary effort the colleagues on the floor said kya fayda hai why are you working harder than you are supposed to be doing well, let's have a tea break or a coffee break let's go and you know walk have a walk in the corridor in the terrace and so on so forth so social impact is going on and of course you know the last is the structural piece structural is is this the right kind of incentive is the right kind of process in place does he have the right kind of so you know uh, facilities tools which are required to do a job now when we are looking at uh, performance issues or when we are looking at broken expectation our research shows that we need to explore as leaders in particular where the real cause is and if we can energize or handle even four out of these six causes which we have shown here you know the chances are that the motivation level or the results will be higher and you know the whatever we are trying to accomplish with him per this person uh, you know will be of superior quality so we say that the good leaders you know they over determine success because they are diagnosis various parts and not just restricting to training piece of it okay go and train and work on the source too and that is the paradox friends we have seen this again and again happening when there is a broken promise when there is a broken expectation when the performance is not happening most of us tend to work around only the skill part of it give training put him training or at best if you are, if you are she is lucky to have a good leader you are maybe working on the motivational part of it but they don't go beyond 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 and generally then they end up labeling people the quality of accountability discussion is not there because we are trying to address something which is which which may not be the real root cause and then people pay the price for that and if you look at after the accountability discussions you know this is like any other business discussion you know what does who does what by when and follow up it's like you know what we agreed on how are we going to follow up with this this on this discussion and you know what is the timeline and duration on that follow up part of it so this is the sequence we have seen now as i was saying earlier sequence doesn't mean that we start from here and end up here in a linear fashion you may be having these you know discussion and suddenly you may find that you are getting stuck again or you have to reclarify your goals start with heart or you know some stories emerging in your mind and the most we have seen emerging in the mind of crucial accountability is oh again here he goes again here he goes again here comes another excuse and those are the kind of things which come and we say we need to keep on clarifying our stories and and all these skills in the and the and the and the mindset and the journey in handling crucial accountability discussion successfully we talk about in the in the room of course and we we make people practice and when they go out of the room actually you know they feel very comfortable in the entire process so this is what we said earlier the diagnosis the motivation part we need to make it motivating at personal level at social level at structural level we talk about call them source 135 just splitting the earlier diagram and if you look at make it easy part of it it is about the skill part we were saying that the person must be able to do and one of the most important social part we have seen in terms of motivation and in terms of uh, ability is what role the leader plays the reporting manager plays how many times is he having those discussions around motivation and around you know the skill part of it that's what social comes into colleagues come play an important role but manager plays a very very important role and that is where we say are the managers are the leaders really equipped to hold accountability discussions are they really holding our accountability discussions are they really providing the support they need to provide are they really be able to look at the structural issues if any and trying to solve them and handle them for the team members because a bad performance or broken promise can be coming from you know any of these six sources or maybe more than one six sources or maybe all three or four of these sources so how to motivate without power many times we don't have power we say that whenever we you know, there's a problem we have seen again and again when we think people don't care about our concern we either stand to coerce them or wish we could now it is independent of hierarchy you know the second part wish we could this one we either start to coerce them is linked to hierarchy we can we can talk about it we can do it because we have that power given to us by the organization but wish we could anybody can have that wish even the the lowest person in the organization no lowest i'm not saying in any other sense but in terms of designation or responsibility we can wish that i can go and you know talk talk to my ceo because i don't like him or her but then there's a revolutionary finding in our research what we came across was the more position power, uh, power people use the less likely they were to succeed isn't it a paradox the more position power people used in accountability discussions the less likely they were to succeed now 
this is interesting part of it and we realize that this is not a one out phenomenon it happens very repeatedly you know managers think that i've got the power or i'm i'm hierarchically superior or i know more i can go into you know the the power from, you know conundrum and solve it it doesn't happen the solution is make it motivating by safely exploring natural consequences what are the natural consequences you know if you look at there are two kinds of consequences of bad behavior broken promises or you know bad you know disrespect etc imposed consequences are when you are saying that if you don't do this i can do this if you don't do this action i can threat to your job privilege status etc these are called as imposed consequences of any of such things where accountability discussion comes and of course if you look at natural consequences are the ones where the pain or problem people are already experiencing or will experience as a result of their current choice you know now an example if if you know a natural consequence of a workplace could be that i am not performing my i am not doing my day to day job i am not following day to day process of which i'm supposed to be following and some day somebody is going to ask questions but i'm setting myself up for those natural consequences because results will not be there i am not following the process i am not doing right kind of planning i am not doing right kind of work on day to day basis natural consequences imposed consequences come after that now a manager suddenly notices that the person is not uh, Uh, performing you know natural consequences are emerging manager wakes up and then gives some imposed consequences that you are going to be put on you know pip performance improvement plan or no i'm going to you know get you off the of the road or no you are going to leave the organization etc what we are saying here is when we are having crucial accountability discussions if leaders can learn how to point out natural consequences in accountability discussions on day to day basis on week to week basis making people understand the process their day to day responsibility and then if people are able to follow you know we don't have to go into impose consequences began the natural consequences are the best consequences which can make people more aware of how they can be holding each other accountable or on which they can be held accountable so this is something which is very important as we say an ounce of insight is worth a pound of power you know we don't need to use power we need to have insight you know to look at what i can do differently can i be looking at natural consequences can i be asking those kind of questions and your problem is almost always connected to their pain so this is something we stay here help them see a connection between your concerns and experienced consequences what is the connection if they're not doing anything how it is going to impact them how you're going to view the impact you know this is we call as experienced consequences okay so when you care about them you know insight and influence of course in bracket will follow what we are saying here is everything else uh, keep kept aside even the crucial accountability discussion start with care that's what we said look at the motivation part look at the ability part and the insight and influence follow so make it motivating by safely exploring natural consequences imposed when you can always go if you have power you can always impose the consequences but can i can i be looking at you know natural consequences and this is the model we looked at earlier to sum it up so there is something called as before i getting into crucial accountability discussion three skills get unstuck start with our master my stories during describing the gap performance gap or whatever gap it has been you know then make it safe for other person create safety for self also because it's very important and then keep on expanding the pool of shared meaning and when you are trying to diagnose why the person is behaving the way he she is behaving which is not up to the expectation or the standard there could be reasons in these two different columns motivation and ability and this can impact the person at three and different spheres personal social and structural so you know motivational part make it motivating and you know the ability part is make it easy that's what we talk about of course we have got lot of resources we got uh, first chapter download which is you know the book of the, the book crucial accountability can be downloaded when you visit our website you know you can do your assessment there where do you stand on crucial accountability skills and issues you can do that then we got audio companions you know on the website once you register there you can how you can strengthen the skills audio companions are the real case studies of the, the life situation which people have gone through and how they were struggling and how they applied some of these skills and how they got out of that so these are the audio companions and also if you want to know more about this we got a lot of white papers we got research material which we will be happy to share at any given point in time 
and then of course you know we got two days public workshop we got, got we got even certification process around it where you know you can get certified inside the organization and you can run those these are crucial accountability courses of course you have to buy the material or buy the you know kits from us as as legitimate uh, training partner and this is what we wanted to share with you today now well before i i say thank you for your participation if anybody has any questions or any any kind of queries we like to handle that and i'm going to unmute and better then unmuting also will be if you can if you can type because unmuting creates lot of feedback when more than one person starts speaking if you have any question you want to ask please type that in the chat box and i'll be happy to respond to that I'm going to check the box. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So there's Aditi Sharma saying there. Can you speak a little more about five and six diagnoses? You know. So. uh well thanks aditi for that question uh, so we call it as source 5 and source 6 source 5 and source 6 basically talk about non human factors which are impacting motivation and ability so if you look at personal it is within me social by people around me people around me primarily my bosses and my colleagues that is source 3 and 4 and so and 5 and 6 deal with structural structural or non human so structural could be the policies structural could be you know the reward and punishment systems structural could be some kind of processes put into place structurals could be data and queue you know uh, uh, which is in the in the atmosphere or in the environment around people so anything non human which impacts motivation and which impacts you know ability it is to talk about structural you know so this is we have seen is that many times people ignore the power of structural things though marketeers and merchandisers always focus only on primarily on structural things because they know everything is important the way things look like the way things are positioned the way you know things are happening in a store you know it's a very interesting thing though there's a different discussion but here we are talking about non human factors so it's give you an example you know they were, we were doing a project with a with an insurance company and they had kind of institutionalized a scheme where in the scheme the concerned leaders were to bring in more agents because agents are the backbone of insurance business you know so they incentivize on the quantity that more number of agents you bring in more money you will be making so then initially they saw a huge surge of agents coming in and sales managers made lot of money who were bringing in agents but what happened was that they started having an attrition rate which was much higher than the earlier okay and people started leaving and the attrition even became higher than it was used to be in the normal now what what did they discover later on was the incentive which is non human which is as a process they put into place it did not talk about retaining those agents in the system so in the managers got you know kind of high they brought in they you know they made all the efforts to bring in the agents into the company but you know the 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 agents did not stick for long so that because of that process structural thing initially they got of course motivated the work but company had to pay the price you know the motivation was short lived and the ability was kind of not used in the best possible fashion so that is we look at the source 5 and 6 which is non human can be into any though we going to details separate into motivation into ability but primarily processes procedures maybe how we reward how what kind of data what kind of information what kind of even you know in, um, support is available to me my desk my table my all kind of things which go there does it give you some idea aditi i know time is short okay welcome Yeah, thank you. There is a comment from uh, from Om Veer that if we can explain with some video, Om Veer, yes, we like to do that. Unfortunately, the bandwidth which we are having these days doesn't allow videos to be run, and they kind of get stuck. But your your point is very valid. We appreciate that. Next time, maybe we'll taking it. Yeah, the the, the two days have lot of videos. Actually, they got lot of videos. As Samir is saying, 
there are a lot of uh, case studies that we, we do we call it as a deliberate practice sessions and that because here in time one hour or 45 minutes if we try to run video one video can get stuck and consume all the time so that's why we don't use videos in in uh, uh, you know this presentation but thank you appreciate your, uh, your comment on that yeah all right so so with this uh, we are about to you know reach our end goal which is uh, you know, three four minutes away from now we really appreciate your presence being here in case you need more information from us you can write to your contact person in our team or you can also you know visit our website or you can call us up at these numbers we'll be happy to supply more material in terms of research papers in terms of uh, the model how it works in terms of podcast in terms of so many things which we can you know share with you so thank you very much for being here have a wonderful day ahead of you wonderful uh, weekend enjoy your coming holidays best of 2020 to you and your families thank you very much